welcome to this episode of Norwich Theatre Talks. It's lovely to be back here in Podcast Corner at the Playhouse and as ever we don't record this podcast in a studio so please forgive the background noise. It's very much live on a bustling day here at the Playhouse. In each episode of our podcast I really enjoy introducing you to a new member of the wonderful Norwich Theatre team. So my second guest on this episode is Martin Herbert our Head of Facilities and Sustainability, who himself trained as a dancer and now leads our environmental work. But first, we welcome one of the icons of dance. His company, New Adventures, has been performing here in Norwich for well over 20 years, bringing countless award-winning and spectacular productions to the theatre royal stage and delighting tens of thousands of audiences. It's my huge honour and privilege to welcome Sir Matthew Bourne. Matthew, welcome back to Norwich. It was wonderful to see the company back on the stage at the Tyrol last night. How yeah. are you and how's the company doing? The company's doing really well. As you say, we're really happy to be back. Um, it's been three years since we yeah. were last here, so we've missed you. Yeah. <laughs> we've missed our audiences here and all the friends we've made over the years, you know. Um, the company's doing well. We've, we've, we're back touring in a, in a big way, you know, yeah. and it's, so it's, it's very exciting to see audiences coming back in, in such big numbers. So that's been a thrill this, on this tour. Yeah. Um, just to see that uh, uh, better than expected enthusiasm for live theatre. Yeah, that, there was an amazing amount of love in the building last night, not just from audiences, but you know, your team touring back to the venue, our team kind of reuniting again. Yes. That's, you've always taken that as a really special part of the company, haven't you? Your relationships with cities and venues outside of London, all the way through the history. Yes, it's, it's unique actually, uh, almost completely unique today actually as a company. We've toured to many of the venues we go to regularly for something like over, well over 20 yeah, years. Yeah. Uh, for, for most places, so you build up relationships both both with audiences and with the crew and with the with the, the theatre staff and everyone who works there, um, and that's it's different to being in a show. You know, where you come, you you it's a, it's a one off usually. It's not yeah. a, it hasn't had that company feel that continuity. So this is why we form these relationships. You know, it's sort of. Um, feels very special, feel very attached to so many of our special venues around the country. Yeah, and, and it, it's noticed by audiences. Just as I was leaving the building to come mm. here to chat with you, one of our really regular supporters was kind of commenting to me on the progression she's seen of certain dancers that's in right. the company over the year. And that's, for people who really love and adore dance, that, that's amazing. The, the company's grown up with audiences, hasn't it? And dancers yes. have really come through. Yeah, they, if you come regularly, you do see the same people and yeah. you, can, you get to know them. Um, in some ways, our dancers are, are better known in this country than the supposed Royal Ballet famous dancers yeah, yeah. who only perform in London. You know, yeah. we, 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 we do perform all over the country and, we, and the, the, the audiences get to know the dancers and they perform many more shows, you know, than um, a friend of mine, Darcy Bustle, you yeah. know, who was at the Royal Ballet for many years. She, I think she, she really rarely did anything outside of London, you know, yeah. so you never, we sort of vaguely knew that she existed, we never <laughs> got a chance to see her live if you were anywhere else. Whereas our dancers, they do go out and people get to know them. You know? And you're, you don't stop in that commitment, do you? I've noticed over the past few years, um, the Midnight Bell that you made mm. was actually able to go to different venues yes. than before. And there have been all sorts of things that you've developed creatively and developed the company into that sees that reach widen, doesn't it? Oh, very important as well, yes, of course. but. Um, I suppose over the years, the shows that we've done uh, regularly are the shows that we put on at Sadler's Wells at Christmas, and then we tour there, the bi bigger shows. But we also have a sort of whole range of, sort of mid-scale work. As you mentioned, yeah. Midnight Bell was the first show that we came back after COVID with, yeah. you know, and we were able to take that to venues we don't normally go to. Yeah. And I'd love to see that increase. You know, I'd love to see more of that. So we had two strands to the work, the bigger yeah. shows and the, the smaller ones, but still with the quality you know, of work that we do. Um, but also all the outreach work that we do, um, which has got bigger and bigger over the years. It started off being something that we sort of did, kind of partly because we wanted to, as a, along with the, uh, the touring, you know, but there was, it, it didn't have a, it wasn't organised so yeah. uh, uh, carefully as it is now, but we did it. But now, we, of course, we, we, it's a massive part of what we do. Yeah. Um, all the uh, take part work, 
the um, the two main strands of our work outside of just doing the shows are really uh, take part, uh, which involves community, uh, local people, young people, yeah. different sort of specific groups, and a talent development, which is a massive yeah. part of what we do. Well, let, let's touch on that because yeah. I think lots of people listening, and there are so many audience members in our venues I bump into who've seen every single show yeah. and can give the most amazing critique. And actually, mm. last night, because because you often revisit shows, don't yeah. you? And, and you go back to them and there are developments, they can actually spot the difference. It's like, spot the difference. It's amazing. <laughs> I get so stimulated by those conversations. <laughs> um, but Lord of the Flies was quite a landmark moment yes. for you, wasn't it? Where you brought that commitment that you absolutely have to talent development onto the main stage. And that was groundbreaking. But six or seven years on from that, what, what's been the impact of that project? Well, it's, it's interesting you should bring it up today because I was at the Olivier Awards on, on Sunday. And I had a long chat with Leighton Williams, who was oh, in yeah, our Lord of the Flies. Leighton, who was in uh, Jamie. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about Jamie and stuff. And while we were talking, at least three young guys came up to us and said, do you remember me? I was in Lord of the Flies. Now I'm in Book yeah, of Mormon yeah. or I'm in Newsies or yeah. something. You know, they were... That was amazing. Cause you, of course, you don't recognise them because they're so, <laughs> <laughs> they're so much older. They've grown. Um, <laughs> but it feels great, you know. And that's that, that was a very... Uh, clear example of, of the legacy of that show. And it was about sort of taking young, young guys, boys and young men, I would say, um, who found some interest in, in performance, not specifically dance, it could have been dance, but it could just be theatre, and um, they didn't have to be skilled in any way, but they yeah. were brought into this production and um, given a taste of what yeah. it was like to be in a big show. and. Um, and for many of them, it was sort of life-changing. Yeah. Well, we, we've a kind of local hero, local successor, Ashton Hall. Oh, yes. Who yeah, yeah, came yeah. through the Lord of the Fries project here. Yeah. And again, he's, he's part of our artist advisory group here now. We sort of talked to him a lot. A real success story. And yeah, as you say, totally life-changing, but, but sector-changing as well, surely, in terms of you know, bringing new and different people to dance. Yes, that was all part of the... Uh, the the process of finding the young people to be in it was the more hard to find, hard to get at young people, yeah. not the ones who were already, you know, in a local theatre group or, or ballet classes or whatever it may be. It was to find those those young guys who didn't necessarily think it was for them and yeah. sort of to search a bit wider yeah, yeah. Um, and to find local local talent in each place we went. Yeah. And as you say, you know, that's enriched the local community, but also the, as we've gone on to the, into the bigger sort of world of performance and, and West End and wh whatever it may be. So it's been quite wide. And we've had, <laughs> I can give you two examples of, the, of how extraordinary this, the, the, the show was. Um, one young guy, he, it was the classic story. I, I, I either wanted to, I could have been a rugby player, which I'm very good at. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. actually in, um, in trials for sort of uh, national teams. Um, or dance. He chose dance. He's now starring in Dirty Dancing at the Dominion uh, in London. He's the star of the show. He plays the Patrick Swayze role. Um, another guy who was who was in the show is in um, the Magic Mike show. Oh wow! So he went in a completely <laughs> different direction, but kind of worked for him, you know. And he's a lovely guy. And, and but a lot of them have have gone into all sorts of different areas, you know. But there is that. There is that kind of accessibility and that sort of perception barrier isn't there that mm. you know that traditional dance training route is going to see you working contemporary or yeah. ballet and actually what you've done through the creation of your shows mm. is create I wouldn't say fusion because that's, that's kind of a loaded word but you yeah. know it, it, it's a blend across so many, many genres isn't it and it's the same for audiences I think. Well it's the same thing I recognised very early on in why we do this now is that I felt that our shows connected with young people in a way that, I mean, not all young people are gonna look at a guy in white tights and a girl in a tutu and think that's me, no. that's for me. <laughs> Some will, and that's great. No, yeah. Don't have a problem with that, obviously. You know, it could be very inspiring, but it, not all young people are gonna feel that. And I felt our, show, our shows represented um, people that young people could, re could identify with and, um, and feel like I could be part of that. I want to be part of that. I yeah. want to be that kind of swan rather yeah, than... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I, I think, And I thought we need to sort of uh, take that and do something with it because I felt it, it, was, it, was, 
we would be neglecting a whole area of young people if we didn't uh, kind of inspire them, keep inspiring them yeah. and ma and, and in a practical way. You know. And that's that, that sort of craft of your storytelling, isn't it? Which has had the same impact yeah. on audiences, yes. I think. And yeah. You know, across the company started performing in Norwich in 2002. I'm told about 60,000 people have seen your shows over that period of time, which is amazing. Yeah. And what we notice is that that audience group is quite different to other dance forms. Actually, you see much more crossover with musicals yes. and, and drama because of the way you tell your stories. Was that an intentional approach or did it evolve for you? it's it's sort of intentional and not I it's I know I know that what I do when I make a piece is that I try to put myself in the position of someone who knows nothing yeah and it yeah, could yeah. be an older person could be a young person doesn't matter you know because there's so much intimidation about going to see a ballet you know and people feel they've got to have some sort of codified yeah, yeah. knowledge and special <laughs> knowledge and they're not going to get it so I always put myself in that position my job is you buy your ticket, you sit there, the curtain goes up, I tell you a story, you know, and, yeah. and you shouldn't need to have read anything beforehand. So that's, I've always approached things in that way yeah. to try and explain what we're doing, you know, so that it's not mysterious. So there's that, but also it's, I, I think it has a lot to do with the way the shows look, the way they're costumed, they, they tend to be, I suppose, in, in many of the shows, more naturalistic looking costumes, yeah, more like yeah, you're having yeah. a play or a film yeah. or something. I, I don't have scenarios in programs because no, I no. feel people want to learn about the story while they're watching it. Yeah. And I always think you don't want to know the end of a great a movie when you go, no otherwise you don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've, you've spoiled the whole thing. So I think all those sort of things help and make people trust you. Yeah. I think that's the thing that's happened over the years. People trust, yeah. trust us to tell them a story and that it's not going to be um, a difficult watch. Yeah. You know? And just back to that point around revisiting, which, which you have done with mm. shows, haven't you? Is that, is that about making the shows, making sure they're relevant? It, or is it about mm. a kind of perfectionism? Can, can you, is it that you can't leave them alone? <laughs> it's all those things yeah. you just said. Um, I, yeah, I suppose perfectionism does come into it. And it's not that so much. It's, I think with the, with the distance of time, you've always feel you can approach it in a fresh way. Yeah. And, so you, you, and there's all little things you think, oh, I wish I'd done that. So you can then do it. You know, I, I love reviving work. I know yeah. that a lot of artists don't. You know, it's all about the new. But I, I've always found I can make the shows better yeah. and richer. And as time's gone by, we've reworked them design-wise and other, in other ways yeah, as well. Yeah. So I think there's, you know, there's always something you can do. Um, but also, as you say, I think you have to have an eye on how things have changed, how times have changed yeah. when are you reviving a show. Because some of them were, you know, 20, 30 years ago now, yeah, you yeah. know, some of the early ones. And um, attitudes change, you, you have to have an eye on that as well. So, um, and sometimes it's, it can be pointed out to you because you're so used to the show as it is. Yeah. And you haven't quite sort of, I think, oh yes, I suppose that is, that, that could be seen in that way now. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you do have to have an eye on that. You have yeah. to be clever about it. You can't just say, this is it, you know, yeah. we produce something. And, and, and uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the early shows were, you were given the adage, pioneering, weren't you? And, I, and I'm always curious when people have that yeah. name, pioneer, attached to them. Is, uh, does that feel like a kind of weight around your neck? Is it something that... You don't wake up every morning and say, hi, I'm a pioneer, obviously, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But is, it, is it a bit of a shackle, that sense to keep pushing boundaries and, and mm. to shock even? Well, it's a funny thing that's happened to us over the years, I suppose. I, I don't think I did set out to do that in no. a way. Um, and what seemed to be uh, very different when we first did things and were, was labelled well, some people were sort of shocked by what we mm. did, for, you know, with Swan Lake and things like that. You know, there were people walking out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, or people expecting a version that they knew already. of yeah. A lot of the f t titles have done are very famous titles yeah, yeah. and there's an expectation. What's happened over the years with our audiences, I think, is that they, they want it to be different now. They expect it to be different. Yeah. So there is an expectation, like you were yeah. saying, of, of, you know, you've got to deliver that. But that's kind of the way I work anyway. I take a famous piece and I ask a lot of questions about it. Yeah. What if? A lot yeah, of what yeah. ifs, you know, we change the time yeah. or change the sex or do whatever yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, but audiences want that now. They'd be, they're, they're almost disappointed if it's a bit too conventional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a show like Swan Lake, you know, 
Two Men Dancing Together in 1995 yeah. was something people couldn't, uh, some people, not everyone, a lot of people loved it, but uh, some people couldn't handle. And it was seen to be, it was always talked about as, you know, f was it feathers ruffled in the, in the ballet world and <laughs> the bad boy of the ballet, it was called. Oh, yeah, I'm not yeah, even yeah, from yeah. the ballet. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And now it's, you know, it's a Christmas show at Sadler's Wells in London. It's the, it, it bring the family. Absolutely. It's a complete, you know, all that, it, over that time it's become yeah. a, a national sort of institution. Yeah. In you mentioned it there, you are from the ballet. That, that's, that's kind of where you, you came from, but actually your career went into making and choreographing shows. Yeah, well, I'm not really from, no, I'm not from the ballet. I'm from, I'm, I'm really not. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it, I yeah. loved, enjoyed it, but I didn't really see my first ballet till I was 18. Yeah. Uh, and it was like almost self-education. Yes. I, when I left school, I, I, there were certain things I'd never done. And I was into this thing of, you know, I've never seen an opera, I should try it. I've never yeah. seen a ballet, what's famous? Yeah, Swan yeah. Lake, it's famous, I'll go and see that. Yeah, yeah, Or oh, reading, or, you know, all those things. So I, I was trying things, that's how I discovered it. I, I loved dance before that, don't yeah. get me wrong, I wasn't, that wasn't my introduction to dance. Absolutely. But my family were not um, into ballet or opera or classical mm. music or anything. So you've kind of lived that experience that you're now, as we were saying, trying to give to, yeah. to young people and and yeah. to audiences in bringing them, because it is, it is that sense of, gosh, I need to know a lot of stuff to go and see this show. There's that sort of assumption that you're not going to be able to cope. And then on top of that, you know, I often lose sight of even theatre convention for yeah. some people, when you clap, when you don't clap, you know, yes, yes. is quite a barrier, isn't it? We yeah. take that for granted. Yes, no, there's so many silly things in, 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 in ballet that you're supposed to know. You're supposed, there's these, these sort of behavioural things and cla clapping, as you say, all the time. And, this is all expected. Um, and also I, I go along now and I <clears throat> open a programme and there's just loads of writing about the stuff I'm supposed to read. You know, yeah, Act yeah, One yeah. is about sort of page yeah. and a half of small writing. I, I don't, I, yeah. I never read those things. No, I no, no. sort of go like, well, right, you show me, tell me what you want to tell me and yeah. I'll, I'll see if I get it. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. I wanted to talk about one particular project that has, mm. I think has been a recent development for you, which is Doorstep duets, oh, yes, which kind yeah. of came out of yeah. COVID, didn't yeah. it? Because all the stuff we've been talking about, about you know, people getting to know the dancers and your dancers just being such a friendly bunch yeah. you know, around the building. Actually, that, that's kind of living up to its name, isn't it? Taking dancers into really unusual spaces. Yes, the doorstep duets, it did come out of COVID. She said it was about people who, um, the idea that people couldn't leave their homes and, they, and um, uh, for some people that took longer to, yeah, to yeah. come out into the community again and um, so it was taking, taking entertainment to them, dance obviously is what we do, so we choreographed some small dances, took the music with us and took it to spaces that would never normally have that kind yeah. of thing and some, sometimes literally on people's doorsteps yeah. so they could come out and sit and watch a, a performance yeah, you know? yeah. and I was, I was, I was um, initially, I thought, oh, I don't know, is this a good idea? <laughs> Would I want someone coming and knocking on my door and doing a dance in front of me? Do you mind them watching telly? <laughs> I, I, I was proved very wrong with it, actually, yeah. because I, I, um, it's been incredibly successful. People have been so uh, grateful for it and have loved it. And I did go along last year, they, the, the company that were doing it came to Brighton, and which I have a place in Brighton, and I, I um, went to watch a couple of performances in the outside the pavilion, and I, I still had that same feeling like, oh, is everyone going to want yeah, to, you know, like yeah, where they're sitting yeah, having yeah. their coffee? Do they want to yeah. be interrupted? Absolutely loved it. They were all sort of into it. They loved the experience of just having a free performance yeah. in, in front of them, and it um, there's a lot of joy in it, you know. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. there is. And, you know, I, we can't say too much watch this space, Norwich. It's a project that I think is, is so important post-COVID because we know for some that experience has been life-changing. Yeah. We also know in this kind of climate where coming to the theatre is going to be difficult for some people financially, mm. that actually, you know, your commitment to place and a project like that is, is, is going to be so vital and valuable. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I think um, you know, finite money does come into it as well now. So you, we, as well as you know, the other thing that happens is sort of cinema. You know that yeah. taking uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. taking your work to other places. We do that. Every, seem to do it every year now. We yeah. film our shows and they go to cinemas in rural areas and 
very, very popular, you know, these things. But doorstep duets is something that we, such of as a one-year thing, was so successful. I think we can develop its own rep now. It will have a l yeah, rep yeah. of little pieces yeah, yeah. that we can put together and have this rep of pieces that work in outdoor spaces and uh, something we you take five minutes to set it up, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to move on to touring because, as we said at the beginning, your company mm. is unique in that actually you're not physically based in London. You're a resident mm. company at Saddle as well, aren't you? But you've always yeah. been. And the earliest tours were supported by kind of a lot of the regional venues in the early days, weren't they? Yes, and, yeah. And, you know, I, I just have huge admiration for how you've committed to that going forward. And, you know, the kind of other partnerships that you've looked at, the work off stage in communities, but also now around green adventures. And yes, yes. I just wondered if you'd tell us a little bit about, because I think that's a project really close to your heart as well. Yes, yeah. It? Well, we're t you know, the touring is, we are a touring company. Yeah. So I don't say we're based anywhere, really. We, no. We're always somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere different. Um, so the touring has become, you know, is our life, really. That's what we do. Um, and the green adventures um, uh, thing that we started a few years back was just to try and create models for touring that is that is more green, you know, and is aware of those aware yeah. of those things, and to try and work alongside uh, groups that knew more about it than we did, and to sort of so they could come in and advise us and what what would be uh, uh, the most green way of doing what we did. Yeah, and it's become something that we've become uh, much more knowledgeable about. And now we sort of uh, a industry leader on it, that, and I think. Arts Council are very um, happy that we're doing this, and it's part of some, you know, some, something we're leading on with other companies. So we know we talk to other companies about, and the venues as well. Yeah, some yeah. of the venues who, who would like some help on that and what to do. And so it's 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 baby steps in some ways, you know. But it's important that we all do our part, you know. And we all think we're all thinking about those things, and it, it shouldn't be something just um, as a touring company that we that we ignore. So it's sort of become an important part and should become an important part of what we all do. Um, uh, absolutely. I mean, we're in the middle, well, three months into a year-long programme across yeah. our venues around climate stories. Yeah. And we specifically chose that title because we've all got a story to tell about what we're doing or what we have done, but yeah. it is one big jigsaw piece, isn't it? It's, as, it's an amount of effort within your means from a lot of different people that's really going to yes. affect change, particularly in our sector, I think. Yes, it's little things in each area of what we do that may seem like little small things, but the impact, if we do all do that, then the impact needs it's enormous but it needs to happen as well it's interesting you're doing that as, as well of course it's, there's nothing more important really at the moment I no think. Th th there isn't and it has to be that concerted effort mm. and it, it's very easy I think particularly when you run a building and certainly I think when you tour and you know there's so much yes. of that that involves trucks and all the rest of it to go well actually how could we possibly but that there, there are the small things you know which when we partnered with Sad as well as a couple of years ago you know the work around just just you know disposable plastic side stage you know, even small things like that because it affects behaviour change, yes. doesn't it? You know, yes. by leading by example, and I think the, the the support from your dancers individually and bringing them on board as champions for this work was was yes. vital, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. We have champions who, who in e uh, in each company that we have, you know, that keep an eye on things and how yeah. we're doing things. But I've learned so much from it as well about how you wash wash the costumes. Yeah, there yeah, are yeah. ways of doing that in a much greener mm. way. You know, fascinating. Each, as I say, each department has done, has, has discovered new things, new ways of doing things yes. um, that I knew nothing about. Well, one of the things that we're really pleased about is that we'll be rebeginning that partnership with Green Adventures this year as part of our year of um, telling climate stories, and yeah. really looking forward to, to sharing some of that. Now, thank you very much for giving the time to talk to us, Matthew. I've, I've got one uh, just as I was leaving the building just now. I was talking to one of our huge supporters. He said, "You've got to ask him this. Are you oh, ready? Yes. Are you ready for this question?" I, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the question was: You've created many amazing characters that we've all seen in your different shows, and if you could play one of your characters, oh. which one would you choose to play? Yes, it's it's quite an easy answer actually for me that one, um, because and it's actually in this current show that's on okay. this week. Um, the the Carabos Caradoc role, ah, okay. with a, with a, where we have a dancer, a male dancer who plays uh, both the mother and the son yeah. of the same you know the same character, 
played by the same person. So you play a female role, Carabos, ah. and then in the by the time you get to Act Two, she's died, and the son and then takes over, played by the same dancer. Yeah. So you get a transformation in the middle. Ah. It's one of those roles that's sort of. I, th I always feel I could do better than anyone else <laughs> who's doing it. I shouldn't say that. And not now, but when I was, you know, when I was performing, it's a it's a role that requires so much um, presence and charisma, mm. you know. And you sort of always think you can do that, but um, I, I would love to do that. I, it's partly because it's a it's an evil character. It's a, it's a villainous character, and I think they're always a lot more fun. Absolutely, Matthew. Thank you very very much for for joining me in Podcast Corner. Thank you, as ever, for bringing the company back to Norwich, and here's to all the exciting things over the coming years. Thank you, it's such a pleasure to be back. Thank you, Stephen. My next guest is a member of the Norwich Theatre team who has also had his own journey both through dance and into leading on sustainability. Welcome to Norwich Theatre Talks, Martin Herbert, our Head of Facilities and Sustainability. Welcome Hello. to Podcast Corner. Thank you very much for inviting me on. And in the first part of it, might I compliment you on the wonderful state of Podcast Corner, the decoration and the, everything's take, looking take nice. pride in the plants <laughs> and everything, yes. Tell us a little bit about your role to start with. So my role within the theatre is uh, it, it's, it's quite diverse. Um, everything from fixing uh, anything that breaks, ensuring that our buildings um, uh, stay functioning, uh, so that we can welcome our audiences in, and uh, and they get a uh, they get a pleasant experience and a and a functioning and functional experience out of the building, uh, but then also um, as you just alluded to the sustainability um, of those buildings and and, and us as an organisation uh, and pushing us towards um, uh, being a much much greener outfit. Um, um, not only um, with regards to the shows that we bring in, but also what we do as an organisation um, and uh, in order to help our planet. Absolutely. Now, people might not realise that with about half a million people passing through these buildings every year, it takes quite a lot to keep them working and looking good. What, what are the sorts of things that you're facing regularly in terms of getting that done? Because they're often not that glamorous, are they, actually? <laughs> they're not glamorous jobs. Uh, maybe I don't go into too much detail on the non-glamorous jobs. Um, but, uh, I mean, ultimately, like you say, it's footfall. Uh, you only have to look at your own house and how, how frequently you use things. Um, and then you just multiply that. Um, it, and it can be very, very simple things, but it is, it's, um, it, it, you know, ensuring our, our building is safe, ensuring there's no trip hazards, um, anything. My day is so varied. <laughs> I can walk in in the morning with a plan and then it goes nothing like the plan <laughs> for the day. Uh, and that's just, that, that's just, part and parcel of, of, of you know looking after buildings that are used in such a you know in such a great way so. our very own Mr fix it <laughs> yes but your entry point into working in the arts came came from a, a performance place didn't yes, it, it? Did, which yeah. is our our lovely segue between my interview with with Matthew because it started in dance for you didn't it yeah it did certainly um I I, I think back in back in the day when uh, you know Saturday morning dance classes were, were were something that you either attended or you got dragged along to. <laughs> um, my younger sister attended and I got dragged along to. And and from what I understand, uh, I I I made the decision one day to to, to join in, um, and that just ignited my um, my passion for dance. And I was. Uh, very, very fortunate to uh, to be able to p 
pursue that as a career. I trained professionally um, from the age of 11 uh, right the way through to the age of 19 uh, and then went on and had a 10 year career uh, as a performer, wow. which, so, um, uh, which took me all over uh, this country, all over uh, Europe uh, and further afield uh, and a couple of times through the door of the Theatre Royal. Wow! So, so you've danced on the stage. That I you're have now performed on the stage. For yes, looking absolutely. Yes. And what, did you specialise in any particular dance form or any particular kind of um, productions or performances? So trained, uh, trained in in all aspects from yeah. from ballet to contemporary to jazz, musical theatre, um, and tap, um, and then found myself predominantly um, doing tap. Wow. Uh, and, and six six out of those ten years were uh, were performing as uh, uh, purely as tap dancing um, in um, two Australian shows. One uh, called Hot Shoe Shuffle, yeah. which uh, which was hugely popular when it came over and went yeah, into the yeah. West End. Um, and then the same choreographer Dean Perry then produced uh, Tap Dogs, which yes. I then went into for for a further five years. Um, which was yeah, a fantastic experience. Um, amazing, yeah. amazing. And what? When was that moment where you? You were obviously very, very successful and and a really kind of sought after skill. Mm. You know, we've all heard bad tap dancing, and we've all heard really amazing tap dancing. Yeah. <laughs> and wh when did you decide that actually you're going to move beyond performance into the kind of broader element of what theatres and venues do? Um, I think I had, uh, I always had a, a, a kind of a, a passion for everything with regards to theatre. So um, when I stopped performing, unfortunately through injury, but um, I stopped performing, um, I then went down uh, the, the, the backstage route and the technical route. Okay. Um, so... Um, uh, it, that then evolved. I was I I worked at um, a, a theatre in Ipswich, yeah. um, and we you know we we developed the technical team there, and then that took me on to front house roles um, as well. Um, which, as a performer, I felt that I offered that. A little bit more insight so uh, and it really really helps me in in the job that I'm doing now because yeah. mm. I as a performer and we, we know that sometimes they can be a little bit precious <laughs> artists when they come through the door um, uh, they I, I know and understand what they expect from our venues mm. and and uh, you know what makes their experience uh, a whole lot better. Yeah. So I can I can take that experience and knowledge and apply that to my role uh, and and ultimately try and give us a better yeah. a, a better receiving space for them. But that's that's a really powerful story, isn't it? Mm. For for young people that might be considering going through that training and entering into the profession. Absolutely. That actually where their concerns might be about you know is is there longevity in this? Is there security in this? That actually there are opportunities to switch and, and that's that's okay because often, and I know this from my own training, mm. you're, it is drummed into, you know, you must do that your whole career. That's what success looks like. Whereas actually, it can be different. As, as performers, you are um, by nature of what you, what you need to do and, and the training involved to get you to, um, you, you know, to a level of performance um, takes a lot of time. And, and you are in theory an athlete, mm. um, it, you know, and, it can end at any point. You can you can pick up an injury just like footballers, mm. uh, just like any other athlete, um, or or any other job. To be fair, you know, uh, you know, a workplace injury of some description. Um, but you can pick up that injury, and that is uh, that's the point where uh, you have to then rethink. Um, and it it's an amazing area uh, to work in because. As you just said, the the angles you can go, the directions you can go, that you might not necessarily even think um, you would find yourself yeah, doing yeah. when you yeah. when you first entered into training. When I started dancing, uh, it was there was still a, a huge stigma attached to it. Um, there were you, you know the, there weren't as many male dancers. Um, the, the perception was very different to what it is now, and I think. Um, the introduction to, of, of dance in education, yeah. 
um, and the huge amounts of different types of work that, that go on that don't force people to be this, you know, highly drilled, trained, you know, professional yeah. that, 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 that the perception is that, that you need to be. Yeah. Um, uh, it is, it's great. It's great to have that out there and, and, and you can go in any direction from, from um, being the performer to operating the lights, to, mm. to, to, to taking those companies out on tour, to yeah, being yeah. the support behind those companies. Yeah. But having that understanding of what it is to be the person that stands in the wings and it, it's on you. Mm. And actually there is a particular mindset which, and, and I feel it myself having performed, but it's amazing to hear you play it back, that empathy, that understanding of, of what that takes and that that still informs you know, your work, even though the work is now very different on a day Absolutely. Day basis. And, and you, you know, as a performer, you are the one that the people are paying to see. Yeah. They're paying to see the experience. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you, but you need that support. You yeah. need that support from everybody yeah, yeah. behind you. Um, uh, you know, and moving with the times and, and trying to be, you know, greener is a, is a huge challenge and it's a yeah. great challenge to have. And that's, that's going to be your challenge now, isn't it, over the next it is, few yes. years? And we're talking at this point whilst we're in the middle of our Creative Matters climate stories. And we've always said that part of that for us as Norwich Theatre is about reaffirming our mm. own pledges and our, our own commitments yeah. throughout these next few years. Just tell us a little bit about what's on your mind around where we start what we need to reinvigorate and what, what we're kind of aiming for? Um, I think um, little things. It, it's going to take every department across the organisation to do their small bit to, to, you know, to push us in the right direction. Um, as you've just alluded to, we have um, a, a huge amount of people come through our doors. Uh, and as, a, as an organisation, um, we, uh, we need to be seen to be making a difference and doing things, um, we are a huge platform for it yeah. because we have such yeah. a, a footfall through the door. So, um, I mean, my pledge is to is to just uh, work with the organisation, work with the team, but also reach out to to those that are already doing it. Yes. Um, and and liaise with other venues, uh, touring companies, um, and. Uh, and, and any organisation that we can pick just little bits and pieces off yeah. um, that will make um, a huge difference. Yeah. And, and, and also it's, you know, it's very much about perception because if we don't, if we don't do these things mm. and we don't, uh, we're not seen to be making improvements and, and going in the right direction, um, it can be, you know, it can be a, a detrimental thing to the business. So we're, yeah, we'll just push to be as, as green as possible. We've got a green wall going up yep. this, <laughs> this year. That's being planted up this year, um, which is great. And we can use that and we can yeah, use products absolutely. off of that within our, within our restaurants, yep. buildings and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, lots of exciting things, I hope, to uh, well, take us forwards. We look forward to sharing more of that as we go along. Now, I'm going to return. Thank you for joining us. I've won... Thing to return to which is dance. Okay. I heard that at a Panto Christmas party, I think maybe a secret centre, there was a tap performance from you. Uh, Are we going to see that again? Can we book you back into Norwich Theatre Talks for this? Uh, if you so wish, I'm sure I could do that. There was, yes, I was. Uh, 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 the, the shoes came back out. They, did. they got dusted off, um, and it was and it was fantastic and a great um, a great little add on for the uh, for the for the cast and crew as well because um, I, I keep it quite under wraps. So um, yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise to some. So well, we may have just exposed it. Martin, may well have thank been. you very much for joining You're us. You're very welcome, and, indeed. Um, for all your work on driving forward our green agenda. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here for this episode of Norwich Theatre Talks. As always, we love hearing your feedback. Join in the discussion. Tell us what you thought about the conversation today. And even please do recommend guests you'd like us to try and bring into Podcast Corner. We look forward to seeing you for the next episode.